voted off the island inside Bill Belichick's failed job hunt. And it goes into why he lost out on the Falcons job, uh, why some of the other teams in the league considered him, the Eagles, Dallas, Washington, why they passed on him and didn't even end up talking to him. It looked ahead a little bit to next year and uh, some of the people around Bill Belichick thinking he'll never coach again and all of this. But the, the meaty stuff was what really happened with Atlanta. What, why? Because after he originally met with Arthur Blank, Belichick thought, right up till the end, frankly, Belichick thought the job was his. And a lot of people thought the job was his until it wasn't. So what went wrong? I'll just read an excerpt here. On January 15th, four days after the cut you just heard, Arthur Blank, the owner, met one-on-one with Belichick aboard his 290-foot, $180 million super yacht named Dreamboat. And the A and the M are capitalized? What am I missing about that? But 295 feet? It's a big boat. Can, again, you wrap, can you wrap your head around that? Yeah, again, just to, to give you an idea, the the uh, uh, the stern would be at home plate. The bow or bow would be at the left field wall at Fenway Park. Give that, That's 305 feet, so <laughs> I'm giving it an extra 15. The type just, of yachts you really only see in, like, Miami. Uh, well, or, Russian oligarchs. It's yeah, a freaking right. cruise yeah. ship is what it is. It was Belichick's first official job. Oh, it was moored uh, in Antigua, in case you were curious. Uh, it was Belichick's first official, or is that Antigua? Uh, how would you pronounce it? It was Belichick's first official job interview since 1998 when he met with Al Davis. Uh, in a lengthy interview with Blank, Belichick showed no rust, sources said. Blank told colleagues that he was very impressed. Hmm. Quote, I think Blank came away from the boat thinking this is my guy, a source close to Belichick said. Though from his vantage point, any momentum following that meeting seemed to die over the next week. A second meeting was planned with team CEO Rich McKay and other Falcons executives. Despite that friendly first session, the unthinkable happened for a billionaire and a legendary coach. Belichick and Blank both checked each other's references. Blank spoke by phone at least twice to Robert Kraft. Among the NFL owners, Blank considers Kraft his closest friend. Publicly, Kraft and Blank have said Kraft expressed only support and praise of his former coach. But in a conversation with Blank, Kraft delivered a stark assessment of Belichick's character according to a source who spoke to two people, a close Kraft friend and a longtime Belichick confidant. So again, this source spoke to sources close to each. Mm -hmm. And those sources said that Kraft delivered a stark assessment to Blank. The source quoted the Belichick source as saying, Robert called Arthur to warn him not to trust Bill. That account was backed up, the source said, by the closed Kraft friend. Multiple sources said that Kraft spoke with some candor to blank about Belichick, though the sources declined to elaborate. One source close to Belichick said Kraft was a big part of why the Falcons passed on hiring him. Again, One source close to Belichick said Kraft was a big part of why the Falcons passed. The sources said Kraft made clear to Blank that, quote, you'll never have a warm conversation with Belichick, echoing what Bill Parcells told Kraft in 96 when he wanted to bust the budget and hire Belichick. Can I I butt in there real quick? Sure. That part really seems seems needy to me. Like, the conversations need to be warm. Like who? Can, if the guy is the most successful coach ever, and he's a savant, you can't have a, a you know a normal what you quote a quote call a quote unquote normal conversation with him. Big whoop! Like get over that. Agreed. But doesn't that speak to the authenticity of what was said? Yes, well, of course. Doesn't yeah. that so sound like Kraft? Totally, one hundred percent. I mean, that's something he would say. Yeah. Now the distrustful part to me is something different. I know you're talking about the yeah. warmth, but if you can't trust a guy, that is that's a different matter. Anyway, quote blank likes coaches who feel part of the family. A Falcon source said, also needy. And it wasn't going to be that way with Bill. The comments were consistent with what Kraft had been telling confidants for months. After an unprecedented run, after Spygate and Aaron Hernandez, after backing his coach and moving on from Tom Brady, after disagreements public and private, the owner had lost trust in Belichick, which was a key reason for their deteriorating working relationship and the end of the Patriots' way. A second source close to Kraft said, quote, Kraft found Bill to be extremely difficult and obstinate and kind of stubborn and in the end, not worthy of his trust and also 
Very, very, very arrogant, end quote. Three varies. That stood out to me. Your thoughts? <laughs> well, shocker. Yeah. <laughs> like, thank you. Well, thanks for telling me. Like, I didn't know that already. No, and I'm not, I'm being a wise ass, yeah. but of course. Yes, it validates that uh, much of what we thought. That Kraft saw through all the stuff with Bill and saw him the way that most other people did, and he put up with it because of the winning. And, Mike, just to, to rewind a bit to that comment that you said that Belichick, a source close to Belichick, said that Kraft undermined him, and I'm paraphrasing, right? Even if it's not true, it's what Bill believes, right? So let's say this: if the source is getting it from Bill, Bill believes that. So Bill believes Robert stabbed him in the back. He's probably right. Again, Robert, this is earlier. I just read this. Robert called Arthur to warn him not to trust Bill. Robert called Arthur to warn him not to trust Bill. That account was backed up, the source said, by the close craft friend. So there's some, I know it's sort of like two degrees of separation. It feels like a source within a source. But one of those sources within a source is a craft friend. Mm -hmm. So there is some corroboration here from the craft side of it mm -hmm. now the team through stacy james today has denied it strongly has been a very uh very uh deliberate and clear in the denial of this uh stacy james said uh that and, and i'm paraphrasing that craft may have complained about belichick while they were losing during the year as any owner would get among other owners like you know we suck and the, the, the coach doesn't make games like generic kvetching as we would say, about the the coach. He may have done that, but he did not disparage Belichick to blank and never, quote, questioned Bill's character or trust. So the team is totally denying it. Also in the story, I find this interesting, that uh, Wickersham reports that if the Falcons had hired Belichick, the reported $25 million annual salary owed to him by the Crafts for the upcoming season would have been offset by blank. So I find that interesting because financially, anyway, it was in Kraft's interest to pawn off Bill on Arthur Blank. No, he's great. Don't listen to anyone. It's all that's, you know, no, you love him, Arthur. Go ahead. You know, like, I don't want to pay him. You pay him. It's like, so that it, financially, Kraft would have been motivated to say nice things about Bill Belichick, which again, that's sort of, I don't know how you want to square all that. But just what are your thoughts on this story, Murray? I'll start with you. I just think it's this thing is going to has kind of continue to deteriorate, and I think it's really starting to make Patriots fans hate ownership. Like I, I've seen it at least, you know, you got to take what you see online with a grain of salt. But there are a contingent of Patriots fans that are still Bill Bobos that feel like this thing gets worse by the day, and Robert Kraft is kind of ruining his legacy. Do you believe Kraft undermined Belichick in his chance to get the Falcons job? Yeah, I do. I me, do. Me too. Definitely. Definitely. Again, I'm not the least bit surprised by this. Like, I, I, there's no question. If a if an owner wants to hire a guy as his coach, he's been fired by another organization. What's the first thing you do? You pick up the phone and call the owner who fired him. What do I got to watch out for? Which I I just find how how much of a headache is this guy worth? There's no question. I I just think that that's like you know. Again, I'm not. I thought the story was fabulous. But it definitely happened. But that headache brought you the most success in league history. And so, okay, he was a pain in the ass, difficult to talk to, and all of that, and very, very, very arrogant. Okay. And these last four years were horrendous. But I'm sorry, like, in any walk of life, but even in this one, like, you owe it to your employee as an employer to give good remarks to the next potential employee, unless you, like, slept with his wife or burned the building down. <laughs> I'm sorry. like he Really? Br yeah, you brought he brought a ton of success to this franchise. And even though I wanted him gone... Oh, well, the whole if, reference thing... I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. That reference thing, I, he owes it to say, like, okay, look, we had some issues he was difficult to work with. But, I mean, look at the rings. Look what we pulled off here. Yeah, you should probably give him a chance. To say you shouldn't hire him? I think that's, that's dirty. Okay, well, what, what if... I mean, the whole reference game. Someone that you're really close to and really trust you Wants to hire your uh, nanny, uh, your housekeeper, your uh, plumber, your electrician, whatever. And they didn't do a good job. But he did do a good job. That's the thing. So, yeah, it got ugly here the last four years. But, I mean, look at the greater, you know, the, 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 the bigger sample size. Here. They did a good job, but they were an a-hole. The job is what matters to me. I don't care if they're cold. You know, as again, as long as long they're not doing something completely horrible, I'm just kind of well, playing devil's advocate a no, little bit. So, but but I'll give you an example. Murray, I mean, because I, I know what you're saying. To, but what, what I'm saying, when someone's asking for a reference, your relationship with that person is probably should be the most important thing. If my brother, my wife, my child asks me something about 
someone they're going to hire. Like, I owe them the... I, I would want to give them the unvarnished truth yeah. over protecting the employee. You know but, what I mean? But, but of as course. long as the job was done correctly, and I'm happy, satisfied with the job, for, let me say a plumber. Like, I hire a plumber, and he did an amazing job, but he gave me a stern lecture about using baby wipes like idiots. Stop flushing these things. I would recommend that plumber to someone else. Be like, yeah, he's kind of a dick, but he did a great job. That's, yeah, but, what, that's what I think Robert Kraft should have done with Arthur Blank with that phone. Well, we're going to get all these real-life examples now. It's going to bug me. Okay. I, I, strike it. Strike the last minute. What my, was the comment? From, my fault. What was the comment from Stacey James that, that Robert Kraft never said anything malicious or negative about Bill's character? It was something like that, right? Uh, yep. Stacey James, again, so I paraphrase the first part of this. Stacey James said, sure, that prior to January, Kraft may have kvetched, that's the word I used, kvetched to other owners, but... Uh, he did not disparage Belichick to blank and never, now this is directly quoted, and never, quote, questioned Bill's character or trust, end quote. Okay, so... When talking to blank. He never questioned his character or trust when talking to blank. Yeah, so so what if a blank said to him, well, what was it like dealing with him on a deal? Well, you know, he was a pain in the ass, but, you know, at the end of the day, I knew what I was getting into. Okay, what would concern you, if anything? What would concern me? That the game has passed him by. What if he said that? What if he said at the end... You know, it's not a character concern, but what if he no, says, said that that's well, fair. listen, he was a great leader when he was in the prime of his career. The it, fact is, though, that now he's 72 years old, and the last couple of years, the thing slipped. Yeah, and you can use the last four years as a basis to that. So that's fair, cold, but fair, but understandable. But this other stuff... Well, listen, so if you would I'm take it back to January 11th, okay, when you got all angry at us for calling out this press conference, for being disingenuous... And we're having a problem with it. And the problem I had with it is that it wasn't real. If it were real and Kraft really had warm feelings for Belichick and wanted to do right by him, he would have fudged the reference. Definitely. He would have downplayed the bad stuff and overplayed the good stuff. And he would have taken care of him there. But he didn't. Because they hate each other. It's personal. Okay? And that's why... The, that's why that that press conference was such a joke, and we knew it in real time because we're not we don't approach it like fans like, oh this is so classy and so let let us have a day you said, no not if it's not real, no, and that that crap wasn't real, and so like we can argue the whole reference thing it is I think we can all agree that if Kraft wanted to take care of him, he could have taken care of him there with Arthur Blank. I think that both Blank and Kraft look really weak. You want to have happy talk with your coach? And Blank does. Blank's one of these guys. He goes down onto the sidelines at the end of games with yeah. his wife. And, like, I remember, was it Jim Mora? Not the playoffs. The the other Jim Mora? The son. The son. I remember that Jim Mora, like, would go over and talk to Arthur Blank knowing he had to kiss, kiss his ass when he came down onto the field because Arthur Blank is so needy and egotistical. As evidenced by his boat, as Vinny tells me, I asked Dream whatever, Dream Boat, how come the AM, the D, A, M, B were, uh, so Dream Boat, D is capitalized, but A, M, B in the middle of it was capitalized. A, M, B are, are Arthur Blank's initials. Oh. Okay. So it's like he's, you know, billionaires. These needy, small, penis owners, billionaire owners. You want the coach to kiss your ass and kiss the ring and be nice to you on the sideline when you're like, oh, my God, all of you. We want him to be part of the family. Ugh, oh, like yeah. that. Oh, yuck. You know, it's sort of like you want to win or not. Now, we can argue whether Belichick is capable of winning at a high level anymore. I don't think he is. So, like, you just want to focus on that. You can focus on that. But he's not going to be nice. He's not going to be warm. You won't have a single warm conversation with him. Do you want to have warm conversations and lose or really acrimonious conversations and win? B. And now, ideally, you have both. You have. A, it seems like Andy Reid's a generally nice guy, and he wins, and like you would honestly want both. But with Bill, you don't get it. Okay, so that that he's just one of those guys you got to pick or choose. So I, I think both these, I think both Blank and Kraft look kind of needy. They do. Yeah, I would also say though, like Bill's a little naive too. Did he really think Kraft was going to give him a good reference with yeah. the way that thing ended? No, it's true. And this, so this comes back to Bill, too. Like, if you just acted like a normal human being a little more often, maybe you wouldn't be in the spot that you're in. I mean, it, it all comes back to you one way or the other. The thing continues. 
That's also the story. It's not over. If you like that clip, check out more videos from Felger and Maz here. For more Bruins analysis and opinion, hit this playlist. And for all the latest from the Sports Hub, download the app at 98.5thesportshub.com.